Hello everyone, my name is Jenny Birak and I'm an astrologer and an energy healer. I work with the energy of Archangel Metatron and um, I want to say thank you and welcome to everyone who subscribed and um, and all of you who like and share comments with me. I really appreciate it and uh, I have a great story for you guys. Um, so when I finished making the last video uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, when it was when we were doing the uh, full moon in Aquarius, there was an aspect that I talked about between Mercury and Uranus and Uranus is the cosmos and uh, cosmic creativity, freedom, revelation, things that come out of the blue. Uh, and in the last video that I made, um, I don't know, about a week ago, Metatron was talking about lightning striking. He was alluding to Uranus there as well. Just things that come out of nowhere and you they're unexpected. So in Mercury is communication. And I listened to a tarot reader who had been saying over and over, you know, you have a message coming in. But the card, the tarot card for that is the same as my children coming to visit and that happened so I just kind of thought you know I don't pay a whole lot of attention I'll put a whole lot of stock in that but um, so I finished making the video and uh, went to get my phone and I saw that there was a missed call um, which and it didn't have a caller ID which is kind of strange for a Saturday evening and then while I was watching the video making sure it was okay to upload um, a call came in again with no caller ID and typically I don't answer those calls because I know my phone number is out there and I let people just leave a voicemail but I thought you know what the heck I'm gonna answer and so this man with a very I'm not sure his country of origin but I could tell that he had an Asian accent uh, and I so I immediately said you know okay the first question that he said to me was are you an energy healer and I said, yes, who gave you my phone number? And then he said, do you work with Quan Yin? And I said, yes, I work with Quan Yin. I work with a lot of the, the angels and ascended masters. And I thought he's trying to check out, um, you know, my credentials before he makes an appointment with me. And I said, again, how did you get my name? And he said, I'm, and I couldn't understand his name. Um, and he said that he runs a healing art center in Manchester, California. And uh, so that and that he was in Tibet, that he was calling me from Tibet and that the Council of Light had given him my phone number. <laughs> he didn't know who he was calling uh, and they had a message for me. And so he told me some things that nobody really, nobody knows, like a friend of mine who, you know, we do healing sessions together, but even we hadn't put together uh, the whole picture. And so he filled me in <laughs> on things going on with me and told me some things about next year and then was like about to hang up. And I was like, what is your name? <laughs> and he said his name was Sun. So if anybody knows who I'm talking about in Manchester, California, I would love to thank him again. It was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, that just shows you that when you when it's time for you to get a message or some information that you've been asking about, the creator will find a way to get you <laughs> that information. That's not even the first time something that wacky has happened to me. But, um, but yeah, I thought that that was pretty fantastic. So... I'm wondering if anyone else had any messages that came in unexpected happenings uh, with like something information maybe that you found out. Um, there's another aspect like that coming. In fact, we've got like a few like that right now actually happening in the sky with Mercury and Uranus. So uh, yeah, there could be more more messages to come. So I thought that was pretty crazy and I couldn't wait to share that story with you guys. But we're going to talk about now the season of Virgo. And I should mention, because so many are asking, um, I spent a great deal of time editing videos and uh, was using some new a new app that I had not tried before. And after, I mean, I don't know how many hours this weekend, 
I uploaded five minute videos <laughs> for every class. So apparently not the time to get that done. Um, and I'm really hoping that by the new moon in Virgo, because the teaching is, it's the, the course is an ascension course. It's about coming to enlightenment through your natal chart. It isn't teaching astrology. I mean, obviously there's a lot to do with astrology, but it's more the energies that we contend with, with all of the houses, the, the signs, and the planets that we all have. Uh, so anyway, it's on, it's Virgo Pisces. That's where Metatron had a start. And, um, yeah, so it is a perfect, perfect timing for it to go out would be this new moon, but maybe my perfect timing is not the creator's perfect timing. So hopefully that'll be up by the end of the week and I'll put it in the community tab when it is finished. I can't give it to someone else to do because no one else knows what to edit. So um, I was so excited that I had this past weekend, uh, you know, free, like no, no, no one to take care of. And I made sure I didn't have anything on my calendar for work. And I dedicated the weekend to doing it for no reason. <laughs> so I was not happy, not happy. And um, I asked, you know, why? What is the point of this? What is this crazy nonsense that you're making me do? And, um, <laughs> which is nonsense because they don't make us do anything. But Metatron just said things can change very quickly because he had said that it would be up like by, you know, like within this amount of time. So anyway, things can change very quickly <laughs> is the message. And that has a lot to do with what is going on in September. There's a lot of exciting uh, aspects being made by the planets and the planets as above, so below. The planets set the energy for um, as within, so without, as above, so below for all, that all of us are contending with. It doesn't mean that they're making decisions for us or usurping our free will or saying for surely this and this is going to happen, but it can tell us the energy and the temperament um, in the energy, you know, for all of us. So there are they're making a lot of aspects that point to very exciting happenings and the new moon that we have on august 30th is fantastic as well so some key words that metatron and i went over for the month of september before i started making the video is uh we're going to be reassessing are we continuing down the same road or have we started off on a path believing that we were going to get to this place and now we're there, like a career goal or a relationship with someone, and now you're in it and you're like, eh, I don't know. Is this really what I want? So there's going to be some, or are, yeah, are you content is one of the points that he made. Are you content or do you need a change? Because with Virgo energy, we can feel a lot of discontent, you know. Um, and I, I can say this because I have the South Node in Virgo and I've got four planets in the house ruled by Virgo. And I know Virgo very well. And we can, we can be discontent. We can want to tweak things. It's good. I mean, because we all need, you know, the lower energy is that we have to be perfect and really, you know, the way that you get past that is realizing that everything always is perfect, even if we don't like it, even if we spend two days um, investing time in something that nothing comes to fruition at that moment. Uh, but everything is always perfect and working according to our soul's plan. And so uh, we're going to ask ourselves, have I taken this road that I'm on now to the destination where I am? Am I content? with where I am? Or is there something that I've overlooked or a better way that I could do it? Is there a better, a more harmonious way is what Metatron is saying that, uh, that allows you to put yourself first? Or are you still giving too much energy to everyone and your job and all the stuff going on around you? Do you have time to, for self-care, Virgo? Do you have time to, you know, prepare the food that you is healthy for your body to eat? And another reason why, you know, it's important right now to talk about these things is because Virgo also rules health. So, and there's so much happening in the sign of Virgo now, all the personal planets. So those are the ones closest to the sun. Um, they're all piled up there. 
in Virgo. So we've got Mercury, um, the Sun, Mars, and uh, Venus and all there. So we're all going to be focusing on these things and doing a lot of Virgo stuff, which is do, you know, analyzing. Do, is this where you want to be? Is this what you planned your life to look like? Or could would there be some helpful changes that you could make that would be more satisfying for you? And then also he said he was talking about opportunities for expansion and growth. And we're going to speak to that when I get to Jupiter. And that we're we're having, because of the, the planets as they go through Virgo, they will oppose Neptune and Pisces. So and each as each of them goes by Neptune, Neptune is about divine inspiration and creativity. Okay, so, and Mercury is exalted in Virgo, in his home of Virgo. And so you could be having like epiphanies and all kinds of things going on with all of the Neptunian that we're going to be dealing with in this next four, four or so weeks as well. Um, and then Virgo is about reaping what we've sown. So what you were, like the seeds that you planted and the things that you've been working toward now expect that the harvest, the reaping the rewards, it's time to reap the rewards and the benefits of all of the hard work that you've invested in whatever area that is. Um, and then reminding us as well to have compassion for ourselves because with the Virgo energy, we can be very critical. And remember, this is nothing about people with the sun in Virgo. Um, this is about the planet Mercury and the, the sign of Virgo, which everyone has. Okay. Uh, I can tell you after doing years and years of analyzing charts that we're pretty much all the same. We've just had stories play out differently, but pretty much the same issue, uh, issues. But yeah, we're going to be really careful to not be too critical of ourselves. And remember with Venus there that Venus is the other and whatever you're seeing or judging in another person or them, you, that's actually, if they're coming at you with something, that's actually something about them. Just choose to not take that personally. And then remember when there's things that go through our mind about this or that person that irritate us, then it's like, oh, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so it's good to keep that in mind during Vir Virgo season too. Otherwise, with Mars there, we can be kind of defensive. Um, and then he also spoke to releasing fear and imagining the possibilities of what could be created. You know, not like downsizing your dream, but really looking at the big picture and thinking like, how far could I take this? And when you hear any stories of like, well, that wouldn't work because blah, blah, blah. Then you just say, cancel. And, leave, you know, say like, creator, I'm going to leave the details up to you. But this is where I would like to go. And um, this is another time that to be reminded that faith works. Trusting and having faith, okay? And expect that these things are going to come up to be looked at <laughs> over the next month or so. And um, then also, this is a time of destiny, fate, and synchronicities and powerful forces of transformation. And we have a lot of energy with the planet speaking to that as well. So, um, and this period, I feel like... Um, it, we're gonna. This is about two and a half, three month period. Okay, so it isn't just September, but this is like what we're looking at in the period moving forward. That as we decide, like, oh, maybe that's not working to my satisfaction, or I don't feel satisfied. Um, a chance to go back and like reassess things and and iron things out. Maybe make a different plan or tweak the plan. Um, so let's get into the uh, new moon. The new moon is on August 30th, and it happens at 5.37 a.m. in Chicago, 11.37 a.m. in London, and 8.37 on, uh, in Sydney, p.m. in Sydney. And um, he also wanted me to speak to, like, what are we manifesting with our thoughts? This is a really good a good time to be careful 
of what you're manifesting just thinking about this or that. You know what I mean? Because you want to make sure that that's what you what, that you're at that you're being specific. And always when you do a new moon ritual or a manifestation, be careful how you word things. Um, you know, we can't ask for a specific person, but it's good to say like, thank you for this being in my life. Or, um, you know, I'm grateful that I have this. Uh, you know, speaking as if it's already accomplished, okay? Because that's like a, a faith, like a show of faith that you trust that that will come back to you in some way. And every seed that's sown, something comes back to us, right? So, um, yeah, make sure that just be careful like what you're asking for is what you truly want too because this is a phenomenal new moon it's phenomenal it's one degree away from mars and um remember when the the new moons come the moon and the sun are at the same degree so this will take place at six degrees and change of virgo and um when mars when the sun is in Aries, the sign of Mars, the sun is exalted there. Mars and the sun do very well together, right? That's the sun, Leo, and they're both fire. Um, and they sort of invigorate them, each other. Sun is the life force. And Mars is the fire that, like, gives us the, <sighs> to get through the birth canal, you know, or to push that seed up through the ground, the energy that makes the seed burst and then makes it come through the earth. So uh, it's very, very powerful new moon. This is a new moon ritual that is important. If you don't, if you can't do it on Friday, you've got like two, three days, two and a half days. So, and, and actually, yeah, I'm going to cancel that because you really, yeah, it's never, Metatron always says it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. You can always plant a seed with hope is what he's saying, regardless of what the planets are doing. So, but yeah, this is a fantastic energy. If there's a project that you're looking to initiate, it's also great energy for starting a new uh, daily health practice, uh, yoga, uh, walking, um, and getting the closets cleaned out. A lot of times when we, we you know, are looking for abundance, and then you look into our houses, there's so many things that we could do without. And what happens is that we block off the energy for the new to come in by hanging on to the old. And a lot of times that's actually a metaphor for people hanging on to the past as well. So if, if you have time to dedicate, you know, a few hours this month to cleaning out a closet or, you know, making a trip to Goodwill with some things, it's a perfect time to do that. So let's take a look. And I wanted to read, too, um, the fixed star that's at the degree. So the fixed star is at seven degrees of Virgo, and it's called Thuban. It's T-H-U-B-A-N. And Thuban was known as the tail of the dragon or the snake. And... I'm reading from the Astrology Kings website, so I'm going to put that in the description box below. It was it was actually a pole star 3,000 years ago, but it was called the Judge of Heaven. And um, it can be seen from the central passage of the Great Pyramid of, oh, I don't know how to say this word. Is it Cheops? Oh, I think I didn't say that correctly. But anyway, it, it was very significant in ancient times. So, and um, it's the constellation that it's a part of is Draco. So, but uh, this is about the judge of heaven and judgment. And let's see, the Sabian symbol is very magical. It is music fading. I'm sorry, this is actually the Omega symbol. For seven degrees of Virgo. Music fading into silence re-emerges as color. Okay, so it's like one thing passes away or something leaves us, something is lost, and another thing is gained. Okay, so it's sort of like the how we just cycle through and we shift and we adapt. But those are really telling for what you know, what is coming for us this month because all of these 
aspects and the keywords he gave me, they're all together there. And he was talking about transformation. So it says, when anything in your life loses energy or momentum, as everything inevitably does, you strive to give it new life by recreating it at a higher level. So if your relationships become stagnant or your job, your careers become stagnant, then, you know, we're, then we're asked to, okay, what are you going to do to move yourself forward then? What would you like instead? What are you going to manifest for yourself instead of that? And um, I'm trying to get to the chart here. So again, this is the chart cast for London. It's the universal time. I always do this with the moon events. So you see you've got uh, in the second house there, Jupiter moving forward with Ceres. That's very nice energy for benefits, blessings, and gifts, abundance uh, coming. I know that a lot of people haven't had a lot of that in these past uh, six or almost six months since uh, Saturn started going backward. And they're in the third house of like the stock exchange, mercantile exchange, also just communication. Um, that's Saturn with the South Node and Pluto all there in the third house. So again, it could speak to the economy. We're looking at about 18 months or 16. I don't remember exactly when this um, new moon is answered, but we know that we've been contending with the energy of, you know, showing that there's shifts coming with the markets for quite a while. And I wanted you to look up there at Virgo. Look at that pile up. So you've got the one that looks like the dandelion is Juno. And she represents partnership. And then Venus and Mars together. The, the divine lovers are coupled there together. And Mercury also exalted right there in Virgo. So it's really a fantastic new moon energy, you guys. So if you're talking about a new romance or getting a project off the ground, uh, emotional healing even that we, we're going to do for ourselves, um, making an appointment with somebody that, you know, maybe you've known you needed a checkup for a while, uh, maybe doing that, getting that scheduled this month. The north node of the moon, which is like our collective destiny, is sitting with Mary Magdalene and Archangel Raphael's asteroids at the fixed star Sirius. And we've been talking about Sirius since the 7-7 gateway in July, pretty much. And Sirius represents the phoenix and, um, you know, rising from the ashes. So that's where the North Node is. That's, that's also really good. Uh, and then we've got, um, it is aspecting Chiron in a way that I'm going to say, interpret that as, because... Typically with new moons, there isn't a lot. Emotions aren't running so high with the new moon. Uh, Chiron is making a telling aspect, but Chiron is the I am, that presence of the I am that each of us has inside of us. Like, how do you define yourself? I am. And so I am the glory of God incarnated in a human body or, you know, however, what, but Chiron is like the I am. And Chiron is making an aspect that we could see brings a lot of healing for us to the wound of self. So that's why he's speaking to being encouraging and having compassion for ourselves. Because with a lot of Virgo in the air, we can be really hard on ourselves, really critical of ourselves. That's the lower Virgo. But Virgo is, you know, you reap what you sow and getting things, it's efficient, it's organized. Um, when Venus is there, she's going to be discriminating. This isn't going to be a time of going out and spending a whole lot of money because later in the month, um, we've got the third and final exact square of Jupiter and Neptune. So we want to be careful with our money when that's going on because we can overextend ourselves just in, you know, when, when we can't say no. And so we keep telling people like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Um, but it can also be spending a lot of money or getting carried away in a new relationship without giving ourselves time to be discerning. Um, and I, I want to just say, you know, with that aspect, uh, with the new partnership, it is squaring. Um, well, that's a pretty far reach. But, I mean, they show it squaring Jupiter and Neptune. 
Um, Mars and Venus are close to an opposition with Neptune. Close enough, we could give it to them. Uh, so yeah, you do want to be careful if you're going to start a brand new, start any like brand new relationship. Okay, that you give yourself time to really know the person before you decide. Because, and that's been like for a while now, the energy that we're dealing with is where you really want to be careful. Um, just hold off a little bit without going in, you know, full bore. Because with the Jupiter and Neptune square, you could be getting something much different than what you'd planned. And that's not just in relationships either. And then that whole first two weeks, which I'm not going to go into every day because that gets a little tedious and then people ask like what day was that and so but for the first like september 1st we've got venus trining saturn and like i said she's very discriminating anytime she's going to aspect saturn and in virgo she is anyway so that could be a bit of a reality check for people with money this is a really good time venus is money so it's a really good time to look over your budgets and make sure you have a handle on exactly what's coming in and what's going out. Uh, and anything that you need to return to a store, this is a good time to do that. Um, I'm talking to myself with that. But yeah, anything that you, like, any if, if anybody, like, has owed you money or promised, made a promise of giving you money back and hasn't, this is a good time to ask for that. I probably wouldn't do it, like, right maybe at the very beginning of uh of Virg of uh let me think september but um yeah you might want to like mention it you know in a kind way this because we want to make sure we got everything going on that we have a handle on what's happening with our money um and then mercury that day will try and uranus as well on september 1st so you know, that could be like a work project with that's just divinely inspired. And this is what that energy that I was talking about when I got that phone call. That was a square between Mercury and Uranus. But when they're in a trine, a harmo that's where like squares, you don't really, you can't say for sure what's going to go on with the square so much, especially with Uranus involved. But when Mercury is trining Uranus, that is a day where you could be getting uh, information that you've been after for a while that you could, it could some, something could just come to you or you could find it out from an unexpected source. So that's a good energy. But it can also be, you know, Uranus is revolution and revelations. So that's, you know, another day where if you would like to get something off the ground, you're still in that new moon energy as well. And Venus is trining Saturn. And that's an energy of like permanence. So it's a good day to start something new that day. Um, and then the second Mars will, Mars and Venus, Mars joins the sun and Venus is squaring Jupiter. So if you have started something and, you know, weren't sure how it was going, this could be when you find out uh, something about the partner or it could be, it doesn't have to just be a romantic partner, but um, some kind of truth. Jupiter speaks to truth. And then, yeah, I've got, I'm not going to go because there's a lot going on like each day, but all of these planets, like the first couple of weeks, the first like 14 days of Virgo, you can see that it's a time for us to be industrious and um, that that will be rewarded. That if you are industrious now, that you're going to reap the benefits. Okay, so yeah, the, the first couple of weeks of September is a, good, is a great time to get anything that's been waiting to get out the door, out the door or to start a new project. And I really feel like we're going to have this shift then uh, not not long after of the energy that we've all been contending with as Saturn's been traveling with the South Node uh, for months now. Uh, he went retrograde on the 20th of April and it it's about five months later then on the 18th when he, he will go stationary direct, I believe it's the 13th. I'm just mentioning that because, no, sorry, on the 10th, he goes stationary direct. Because when he goes stationary direct, I he's my lead planet, so I know Saturn very well. He's very close to my ascendant. Um, but when he goes stationary direct, I feel relief. So, and I know a lot of you are also born with Saturn retrograde. It happens if you, you know, it's not uncommon at all. So, like this year, it happened for five months. So everybody born in that five months has it. It's not uncommon. But um, 
I feel a lot of relief when he goes direct. And I feel like because it's been such a slog with him traveling with the South Node, it's kind of like, oh, you know, um, that this will definitely, things will begin to pick up, okay? So that he moves forward on, yeah, the 18th. I can't believe I didn't write that down, but yeah. I know he goes stationary direct on the 10th. And he's going really slowly now because he's almost at, or he may be by today, but he's very close to the degree where he's going to come to a halt and then, you know, start going the going forward again. So, you know, it's going to feel like a little, but you have really a lot of energy to move forward at the same time. So try to, you know, get there with your vibration instead of feeling the sadder. And I know it's not, you know. I know it's easier said than done, <laughs> but I'm just saying that that would be the advice for all of us, including me. Um, you know, reach, always reach for the higher energy. Um, and then on the 19th, Mars will trine Pluto. And when Mars and Pluto are trine, that's an aspect of war. Um, that's an aspect of violence. And uh, it's also could be self-transformation if you're looking at the higher energy of that. So um, we'll keep that in mind and just send a lot of peace into the ethers that day. Ask the creator to send a lot of peace. And obviously, I would never say like it's going to happen. I'm just letting you know that on the 19th, you, this wouldn't be a day that if someone has owed you money, you go and ask them for it. Not a good day. Not a good day for that. Um, so, but, you know, really that is Pluto's transformation and Mars and, and Mars, they're both co-rulers or one's the modern, one's the traditional ruler of Scorpio transformation. So, um, yeah, but battle and it could be, you know, we'll see what happens, but, um, that's coming on the 19th. And then two days later is when Jupiter and Neptune and that square energy that I've been speaking about, that's been happening pretty much all year. But they've three times come into an exact square. This will be the final time that they've had that square. So that's why a lot of the, you know, people are getting carried away with politics and just nonsense, um, you know, getting so invested in things that really... Uh, probably are have a lot more to do with fantasy. And then on the 23rd, we have the fall equinox. I will definitely be doing a... Yes. I'm most likely doing a reading for the on the day of the, the fall equinox. That happens at 2.50 a.m. Central Standard Time in the United States. It's on the 23rd everywhere that you are in the world. So that's 8.50 a.m. in London. Um, we have the equinox. And we shift into the fall. And everyone's going to start drinking that flavor. And I saw that Spam now even it has pumpkin spice flavor. Um, on the 24th, Mercury will sextile Jupiter, which is a nice aspect. But it's an aspect where there needs to be a choice made. When there's a 60 degree, a sextile aspect. And Mercury and Jupiter are what we look at. Not complete, not all, only Mercury and Jupiter. But they tell the tale of what's going on for your career. Or, you know, something with, anything with writing or publishing um, could come up that day. That's also, you know, Mercury being the markets. And um, in a sextile like that with Jupiter, there may be something, an investment opportunity is possible, depending on your chart that comes up. Remember, keep in mind that we're still going to be in that Jupiter square Neptune energy. So if something sounds too be good to be true, it's definitely too good to be true when you're if you're thinking about an investment. Um, and then the third and fourth week of September, and I skipped um, the new, the full moon is in Pisces on the 14th, and I will make a video for that as well. And be ready for surprises the third and fourth week because of all of the activity happening in the stars um, the last couple weeks of September. On the 28th, then we will have a new moon in Libra at the equinox. The sun moves into Libra. And um, Mercury. Oh, yeah. Mercury and Venus will go into Libra at the full moon 
in Pisces. So that's pretty interesting. The divine lovers are making their way, Venus, into her home, but both of them into the sign of partnership. So, so yeah, lots of stuff happening this month, boy. And um, I just wanted to read, this is the, the uh, degree where uh, Jupiter has been sitting for, I mean, he was sitting at 14, now he's moved to 15, but um, Metatron wanted me to mention this. It said Sagittarius 15. Prize, this is the Omega symbol, prized possessions are disappearing one by one. Any, although the loss of anything valued can seem like a tragedy, it always clears the way for something else to be gained and carries a valuable message that needs to be listened to. This degree can, own, can deeply understand those messages and perceive how when anything is stripped away, the space opened up is an invitation toward higher consciousness. It is a golden opportunity to assimilate the bliss of non-attachment detachment that's something to strive for in virgo season because with virgo season we can be very like you know um a lot of virgo stuff is you know only i can do it uh virgos i'll tell you don't ex aren't happy to accept help it's kind of like well i'm the only one that could do this anyway so i'm just gonna pile it all on myself and do it and um this could be with all these shifts that we're having and all the Uranian, what's happening with Uranus and Jupiter. It's not a coincidence that they both started, they both changed directions at the same time. And that can be where, you know, that can be like something swift that comes in like judgment, like where, you know, the judgment card in tarot where it's like, nope, that's done. And you're like, yeah. So, um, but just remember, cause that's that, I mean, that happened to me, like wiped out a lot of people in my life, not that long ago. Just remember that there's a reason and it's always making room for something new. It's just like I spoke about cleaning out the closets so that we can bring in abundance and plenitude and more income because we've got a lot of stuff sitting around our house. That's just creating a bunch of stagnant energy and it's not, the money's not able to flow. So that's what will, what will happen. Something else will could be removed, and then the next, and then something else will flow into that space. Okay, so um, he wanted me to mention that, and um, he also wanted me to show you this specific. This is the crystal tarot. I'm gonna. I'll put this in the. But this is the tarot that I learned with Rider Waite. But this is the one that I typically use. So this is the card of Virgo the hermit. But I like this one because Virgo relates to gardens, right? And look at that little fairy. And do you see how she's got her lantern and she's surveying the path beneath the passage that she's on. And she's deciding, how am I going to make it over to that mountain? How am I going to get there? This is a great time to start a meditation practice as well, or really just deep breathing, especially at the beginning of September. There's a lot of like as these planets enter, every time the planets enter a new sign now, they're going to encounter Uranus. So and that can make us anxious, you know, that can really stress us out. So um, just keep that in mind. Deep breathing. Like I said, yoga. Uh, there's also this week. Well, I don't even know how long that... Well, until Mercury and Venus move into Libra in the middle of the month, we don't have any planets in air. Okay? So, words will be hard to find. And there could just be a lot of... And, you know, where you can't quite find the words. So, really important to, be like, think... Pick your... Choose your words wisely right now. And take time to meditate. Uh, sending the blue ray through all of the waters of your body so that you don't feel the anxiety. Really, the cure, too, is to, you know, do that, obviously, but then also to be industrious doing something. Otherwise, if we're just sitting around twiddling our thumb, it's going, we're going to feel very stressed out because it's like that energy where we need to do something. And this is a great new moon to do something. So, um, and then I had people asking about sessions with me. 
all of my information is in the description box below and there's all my social media contact information and um for everyone subscribing to me on patreon i'm very grateful to all of you for your patience it isn't that i don't want to be doing the videos but i had not um, encouraged anyone to subscribe yet because i knew that it would be a while before i had the availability to do it um, so I'm, I will make it up to everyone <laughs> once I'm on, I promise. Um, but, but I just haven't, I need to get the classes finished and I don't, you know, I have to do that first, but the session information, uh, is in the website, in the description box below. Um, if you'd like to make an appointment with me, I'm really not that booked right now. So, uh, a good time. And then all of you who were scheduled, um, for later in the year because something wacky was going on with my calendar uh, that I've sent emails to. I'm going to get back to you about the rescheduling this week. So I'm cleaning up all my Virgo uh, stuff like that too, guys. So anyway, everybody, I just want to make sure that I, if there's anything else that I'm going to share. Okay. All right, everybody. So I will speak to you in a week or so. Hopefully I'll have some good news about my classes. And um, I'm sending so much love to all of you and encouragement. And um, just remember that you are the glory of God incarnated in a human body and that someone taught you once not to speak kindly to yourself. So even if you catch yourself criticizing yourself, be gentle with that too. You can learn a new habit, right? We can all do that. It's not easy. The The self-criticism is not an easy one to get past. But, but yeah, it's a good time to start. All right, guys. Sending you all so much love. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.